There's no shortage of CPU coolers on the market, with companies like Corsair and NZXT producing effective cooling solutions that look and sound great. Asus though think that they can do a better job with this, the Asus Ryu, Ryu, something along those lines, a CPU cooler with an OLED display. Now we've definitely seen gimmicky gaming stuff with screens like this before, but here we have something that could actually prove very useful for overclockers or those that just like to know how well their system is ticking along. My review sample uses a 240mm size radiator and retails for around about £160, though a smaller 120mm variant does exist for around about £130. Inside the box it's a pretty standard affair with the cooler itself, two 120mm static pressure fans, documentation and all the fixings you'll need to get started. There's quite a lot of similarities to Corsair's H100i as both use the same mounting brackets and fabric sleeving, and size wise they're essentially identical too. Having said this though, the Ryu is definitely much more flexible and easy to manoeuvre, which could prove useful in less traditional enclosures or if you're just mounting it in a bit of a different place. Installation was a little bit time consuming, but generally speaking it was straightforward and simple. I used Bitphoenix's Shogun for this build and mounted the radiator at the top. There's plenty of tube length for the more larger sized case, and thanks to the reversible design, I was actually able to mount the pump head with the tubes on the left without any stress or bending. I'm using a KB Lake i7-7700K here, but you can use pretty much any modern processor. I think it's just AMD's older processors that may cause a few headaches. All pretty standard stuff so far, so let's jump straight into it and talk about that display. It certainly won't win any awards for its outright image quality, but it's more meant as a readout than something to actually be staring at. The 1.7 inch OLED screen supports a resolution of 160 by 180 and it can display live readouts of system information, JPEGs and moving GIFs. It's all powered by SATA and connected via a USB 2.0 header. But as is becoming so so classic for ROG, to get this all nicely controlled you're going to need some software, but you're going to need, for complete customization, three separate downloads this time. The first is AI Suite, which, to be fair and to step back a little bit off my high horse, I really do like. It's the same stuff that's been shipped with Asus boards for years, and I think you can tell as it's actually matured very well, and it allows for fan speed tuning, system information, and anything else that you would be using with your normal Asus motherboard. The second is Live Dash, and this is new and it's used to configure the OLED display on the pump head. It's here that you can select which statistics you want to be displayed, or alternatively you can upload GIFs for something a little bit more unique, shall we say. Everything works really well and as intended. You can know your real-time CPU temperature, clock speeds, and voltages, which is all really useful stuff. Now to be fair, you won't be getting as many statistics if you're using a different branded motherboard, as ASUS say that it's currently optimised for ASUS motherboards, whatever that means, but regardless, the potential here is great, as it is a display, so the more stuff we can display, the better. So in the future, I imagine we maybe might start to see some third party integration, or even if it's just more stuff from other parts in the computer that can be displayed on that screen, I think it's pretty cool where this might go. The final bit of software though that you might be downloading is Aura, and if you've got anything else in your ASUS system then you've probably got this installed, you just need to update it so that it would be able to see everything, and then you can sync all your lighting together. So it's rent time! That is the third bit of software you would need for full functionality for one cooler, the computer I have behind me has loads of ROG stuff in it, because they do of course uh, sponsor the channel. If I was to put this cooler in this computer, this is how much software I would have installed on this. ROG Armory, ROG Halo, ROG Aura, ROG Aura for the graphics card, AO Suite, maybe even Live Update, and whatever it was called for the OLED the screen, the display thing. That is too much stuff. What is going on? ASUS, if you want to start selling all of this different stuff for your computer, you have to unify your software. How can you sell all of this stuff for a very large premium if the software is not up to snuff? The fact that you would need all of this different software to make the ultimate ROG computer, which is surely what you want your customers to do, just doesn't make any sense at all. If you're going to be really serious about selling everything in your computer that is going to be ROG and you want software for it, you're going to have to do something that's going to unify them together 
because at the moment, I'm sorry, it is not good enough. Ranting aside though, we do of course need to talk about performance, which is actually very good. The PWM fans that come in the box feel a little bit cheaper than my aftermarket Corsair Magnetic Levitation fans, but they're actually very quiet at lower RPMs and then very effective at cooling at higher ones. I tested the cooler with the 7700K, overclocked to the limit of what the previous Corsair H100i could actually handle, and perhaps unsurprisingly, the results are actually more or less identical. At 4.9 GHz on all cores, 5 minutes of Prime 95 saw a peak temperature of 93 degrees on each cooler when using the ML fans, and then this drops actually to 91 degrees when using the Ryu fans. Obviously, Prime 95 is a stress test and it's very much worst case scenario, so in gaming and real world applications, you're looking at maybe a max of high 80s in the really stressful stuff, or 60s and 70s in moderate gaming loads. You hear that? That was the cat. Noise levels are also handled very well. The pump itself was worryingly loud when I first turned it on with the initial boot sequence, but after that it's very, very quiet. Obviously it will massively vary depending on your overclocks, load types and profiles, but I've actually been very impressed with what look like pretty boring fans. I'd still rather use the magnetic levitation fans for their lower noise levels and lighting effects, but actually there's no real need to upgrade them to anything else. So this leaves us with a simple question. Should you buy the Ryu? I still can't say that, can I? I certainly do like it, as it looks great and has some really practical applications that could be extremely useful for troubleshooting and overclocking. Throw in the great performance, and for current ROG owners, it could definitely be a no-brainer. But if I was buying a new computer tomorrow, I'm not entirely sure that this is the cooler I would go for. The main reason, to be honest with you, is just with price. As at £160, it's more expensive than NZXT, Cooler Master, and Corsair's offerings. And when you can get Corsair's H100i Platinum with the RGB ML Pro fans, it does seem like you're paying quite a lot more money for one feature. So if you're dead set on that feature, and you do want the useful readouts of temperatures and all of this stuff, then absolutely, there aren't really that many options. The Ryu is certainly a product you should be looking at. But if you just want a good CPU cooler, then this is a very extravagant expense for something that you may not even utilize fully in the first place. If you do want to check out current pricing, I'll leave my Amazon affiliate links down in the description below. But a massive thank you to you guys for checking out this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, hit the like button and get subscribed for more just like this. A massive thank you to Asus ROG for sponsoring the channel as always. But as always, this video was my own. And yeah, any comments you have, I'm sure you have some, let me know down in the description, in the comment section, yes, yes, I've been sat in this chair too long, the usual stuff, but let me know what you guys have to say, because I always read them, I reply to as many as possible, and I will be there reading. Time to end, I think. Thank you for watching, cat's now scratching, goodbye.